With the Renault Sport Trophy magazine, we took you right to the heart of this new discipline from Spa to Jerez. The RS01 being used in competition for the first time and in this best of, we go behind the scenes of a first season that certainly lived up to all its promise. In developing the RS01 and launching the Renault Sport Trophy, Renault has once again demonstrated its attachment to high-level competition. Patrice Rati, the Director General of Renault Sport Technology, talks us through the new series strong points. We wanted to make a high-performance car using all the technology from the Renault formula and the single-seaters. The shell is made from carbon, the suspension is top-notch and the design is that of a concept car. Here we've used all the savoir-faire of Renault Sport, optimizing its value for money. In the field, about a third of the drivers come from single-seaters, whether it's a Formula Renault, Formula 3 or other categories, and two-thirds of the drivers have done GT or touring cars in general. Hi, welcome everyone. We're here in spa Francorchamps for the first round of the Renault Sport Trophy. This weekend you're welcome with us in the V8 racing team. Let's go! All season long you'll uncover the secrets of the RS01. To explain everything to you will be an engineer from Renault Sport Technologies and a Formula 1 driver. We'll start with Julien Jeanne and Max Verstappen who will talk us through the aerodynamics, the braking system and the clutch. So here we go. I mean, it's great to just drive away without using the clutch. The car is not equipped with clutch control, but there is a clutch in the car. It's uh, centrifugal and you don't need controls to command it. It has multiple advantages, mainly for reducing costs, but also to prevent false moves and the clutch overheating. Now we go up to Rouge, one of the most challenging corners uh, of the world. And again here you feel a lot of grip before you go up. And here the car gets really light, but it's just a great feeling to go up again. Yeah. We wanted the car to be high level when it comes to aerodynamics. The aim is to have a high performing car that is stable through large corners. On a circuit like Spa with Eau Rouge especially, stability is imperative in order to get through the corner quickly. Drivers come out of Eau Rouge at 250 kilometers an hour. The rear wing is adjustable so that teams can work on the setup and the aerodynamic balance. And the flat bottom has been designed in a specific way so that the aerodynamics remain consistent no matter how the car moves. Great top speed of the car, and here you break at 100 meters, and very impressive braking again. It just feels like a Formula car through the corners. The car has remarkable braking power. The deceleration can go up to 3G, which is huge for this type of car. All that is thanks to carbon brakes and the ABS system developed specifically for this car. There are four identical carbon discs, front and back, in order to reduce the costs for the season. The discs are designed for endurance and races that last several hours, but also for quite incredible deceleration. The driver can set up the ABS to the requisite level for the rain or for the dry and can also modify the balance between front and rear braking. It can change from one driver to another, notably... Hello, my name is Francesco Pastorelli, team manager of V8 Racing. Uh, we welcome you, we will make a small round to the team and let's see who is where. So they are now preparing the cars for the first race, first race of the season, the long race. So this is the car from Max Brahms and Roy Geertz, they're both here. This is our second car, it's from Nicky Pastorelli and Diederik Seidhoff. 
And then we got our 45, the third car, that's for the Italian. Uh, Federico Leo and Stefano Constantini. We're a team based in Holland. Uh, we're new to the series. We never raced before in the World Series weekends, but we like, really like it. There's a maximum of 11 people as allowed it. So we, that's we're using now for the maximum uh, amount of people that we have. This is uh, two of our mechanic. He's the head uh, chief mechanic. That's Renato. He's Italian, so we have a lot of uh, uh, nationalities. This is Mark, he's from Holland. Then we are behind the pit walling system. We have the place from the engineers, where they can follow the complete race. We have two engineers for three cars, so they're working all together with them. We have to keep the car in one piece, the first thing, and then we will see where we end. This is a long race, so everything can happen. Respectively third and fourth on the grid, the number four and five cars have a card to play off the start. Up front, the battle is joined immediately between Nicolo and Richard. Diedrich Sitchoff is fighting for a podium finish. Now the V8 racing driver is overtaken by Dario Capitano on the first lap. The first part of the race was not that spectacular, but we're still running 4th, 5th and 6th, so top 6 all 3 cars, it's not that bad for the first race. Well they were on course for a top 5, bad luck strikes the V8 racing team, that of Nicky Pastorelli and Diedrich Sitchoff, as well as Roy Goetz and Max Brahms. Constantini and Leo hit problems and come back into the pits before the chequered flag. After the first 70 minutes of the race, the number three RS01 of Donche and Frohn were fifth behind Wolfgang Reip and Sarah Bovi. The podium was composed of Pizzitola Gonda, third behind Bacetta Naglio and Fuminelli Capitano, who scored their first win of the year. The start is far less disciplined than in the endurance race. There are fights and collisions. Stefano Constantini hits his teammate Max Brahms and that sows disorder in the peloton. Several cars are forced to abandon. Diedrich Seitschoff and his RS01 number four profit from that to take over the lead and they're fighting it out with Tony Fawn for the win. Up front it's not over yet, Seitschoff fights to the end and lifts spirits in the V8 racing team. Great feeling, winning the race is always good, best feeling we can get now. Good team, a good job, everything perfect.
Welcome to Budapest for the second round of the Renault Sports Trophy Championship. Follow us with Jelly Racing uh, through this weekend and uh, have fun. The Hungaro Ring is nicknamed the Tourna Gate. It's unlike a quick drag like Spa Frankershop. The engine needs to perform just as well, however. It has the specificity of being totally controlled in an electronic manner. And to help us understand, Guillaume Fouquet, a Renault Sport Trophy engineer, and Antonio Felix da Costa tell us about the hidden beast at the rear of the RS01. Well, here we are in Hungar Ring, and we're, we're going to go for a lap in the Renault RS01. Uh, we'll concentrate a little bit on the, on the engine today. The RS01 has a V6 3.8 litre engine. It's a bi turbo taken from the Nissan GTR. We worked in collaboration with Nismo and Gibson. The engine is 550 horsepower and goes at 6,500 rpm, coupled with 630 newton meters at 5,000 rpm. Here we go, uh, exiting turn one, uh, second gear, a lot of torque in the car. Uh, easily progressing through the throttle pedal. Here the circuit is quite sinuous and thanks to the two turbos the engine is very supple. On top of that we have a driving aid called traction. And now coming down to the to the part of the track where you really can make up a lot of time, the last two corners, 13-14. Very hard to get the, tr the traction there, a uh, very long corner uh, to the left and the same here on the, la on the last corner, right hand side corner, very very long pick up the throttle very early, the, the rear wind wants to come away from you. The pedals are adjustable and the driver can select them at his wheel. There are four positions available, from the most aggressive to the most supple. And there we go, that's a lap on the hangar ring. Before the start of the endurance race, the drivers get around a table with Michael Zelle and the two team engineers to define the strategy when it comes to the driver change. For the second driver, on the left or on the right? Whatever you want. Exactly like last time. But I would go into the left side. If maybe we will release you a little bit before because one car is approaching, mm -hmm. so you pass a car in the pit lane, yeah. but then you have to slow down in the pit slow lane. Down. Yeah. Slow down carefully without showing it too much. Yeah. So you have to gain two seconds, but not ten seconds. This time around, it's the elite drivers taking the start of the endurance race, and they score points for their championship. I feel confident, I have to say. Uh, we did a good job in quali. Yeah, hopefully we can, uh, we can turn a very negative uh, qualifying into a very positive race. The start happens at precisely 3.55, and the Hungaro ring is the tightest track of the season. So it's important to be careful on the first corner so as not to be knocked out of contention immediately. Vittorio Girelli messes up his start and that's Stein Schotthorst's fault as he opens the door to the pursuers on the right side of the track. Pizzatola makes the most of that to take over the lead and is followed by Rape and Schotthorst. The drivers from the Art, Monlau and Rochor teams pull out an advantage over the rest of the field while enjoying their own private battle. Schotthorst gets the better of his rivals and never relinquishes the race lead. Further back, Baz Schotthorst has been climbing through from the back row. The Dutchman is on fire and works his way up to seventh behind his teammate a few laps before the driver change. Bas had a very good start, he was cautious in the beginning but he chosen the correct uh, position on the inside and uh, he gained five positions so he's uh, on P7 now so will be very difficult to overtake, let's see what happens. The team's LA Racing number 11 is the first to stop, a driver change which takes place without a hitch and it's Philip Hasbrook now at the wheel of the RSO1. I call you, don't worry. The Girelli Bourgeois change is much more laborious. They lose more than 30 seconds and slip from 6th to 10th. The 
Until the end of the race, Dario Capitano puts pressure on the Spaniard, but it's all in vain. He even comes under attack from teammate Nicolo Nelio, who makes a mistake and sees himself ejected from the top three. Richard Gonda and Andrea Pizzatola are podium regulars at the start of 2015, and they climb onto the third rung. Over at Zelly Racing, Philippe Bourgeois and Philippe Hasbrook weren't able to compete with the others, and even if their lap times improve, they have to contend themselves with 10th and 9th respectively. I'm quite confident the pace should be good, the car is sorted, so Vittorio is fully motivated. I hope it's going to be great. And we're away racing for the final time of the weekend. Stein shot also the for sure team doesn't make the same mistake as in the endurance race and manages to hold on to his advantage. Vittorio Girelli is surprised by Roy Geertz and Wolfgang Rafe, but immediately reposts to take third. Wolfgang Rafe presses hard, but the Monlo competition is soon caught by Andrea Pizzitola, and the two drivers are involved in their own private battle. That allows a Vittorio Girelli to pull slightly clear. Up front, it's as easy as you like for Roy Geertz, in blissful isolation in second, while Stein Schotthorst, with now, masters the race. Baz Schotthorst doesn't make as good a start as the previous day, and the Dutchman is stuck in the peloton. Schotthorst attacks his rivals, but nothing comes off for him. On the penultimate lap, he gives it an all-or-nothing shot, and this contact, a mistake that proves costly as he's relegated to last. Once again, Vittorio Girelli is a Zelli Racing star performer as he finishes third. We're happy with the podium. We finished on P3. <laughs> a good week, a good end to the weekend. In the standings, Schotthorst extends his advantage. Behind him, Rape and Pizzitola are separated by only two points. Hello, I'm Giorgio Testa, team manager of Oregon team. We are in Silverstone, England, to Renault Sport Trophy. Come with us to Oregon. Oregon team are the pirates of the paddock, and the three cars entered at each meeting are regularly in the leading positions. One thing's for certain, it's impossible to miss the pink, green and yellow cars of the Italian team. They come from different and complementing backgrounds. In the six, Luciano Buscetta and Nicolo Naglio set the tone for their teammates in the eight, the two young Italians, David Fumanelli and Dario Capitano. While the seven of gentleman drivers Alan Hellmeister and Adalberto Baptista perfectly completes Oregon team. In the championship, the drivers of the six have had divergent fortunes since the start of the season. Before Silverstone, Nicola Naglio is eighth in the prestige standings, and the Italian must absolutely make up for failing to score in Hungary if he's to have continued ambitions when it comes to the final standings. Luciano Boschetta is sixth in the elite standings and needs to score big points to get back into the title battle. In the eight, David Fuminelli hopes to score his first points this weekend. Third in prestige, Dario Capitano wants to battle it out for top spot. Well, here we are then. On a very, very cloudy Silverstone. Galero of Renault Sport Technology as our engineer for the day. He'll explain to us all the RSO one secrets. And that front one view coming into Cops. Breaking late, you can break so late and then just knock it into Cops. Let the car run out. Thanks to the great downforce which we've developed, there's a lot of grip for the car and that means we can go through the first corner very quickly. A lot of things happen under the car with the diffuser and the splitter. It's the height of the car that regulates the passage of air under the car and thus how much downforce there is. So 
much more than a GT3 car. You just lean into the belts and feel the G's build up. Fantastic. And different throttle maps too. Breaking into stow. I mean, the braking performance. I've not driven anything like it outside of a prototype or a DTM car. we go for the endurance race and there's Nicola Nalio on pole for the 70 minute race plus one lap he set the quickest time and that means he'll also be on pole for the prestige race on Sunday it's Oregon team across the front row because the aged Dario Capitano is going to go off alongside him Diedrich Sitoff will go from the fourth row and Nalio gets an excellent start Followed by Capitano. While uh, Brams went off onto the grass there. Max Brams, the four. Trying to get past uh, Constantini. Well, Constantini's car has problems. That's uh, water temperature problems for the 45. He's got to bring the car back into the pits. Really bad luck for Stefano Constantini of V8 Racing. While the drivers are getting ready for the driver change. The minimum driving stint, half an hour. The elite driver should spend longer in the car than their teammates. So Nalio out of the car and Luciano Boschetta taking over from him. Everything going well for the Oregon team at the moment. So Boschetta leading. Number eight in second. And we cut now towards the last lap as the 70 minutes is coming to the end. It's Pastorelli against Geertz. This is a, a battle further down. That's fourth and fifth. Side by side, wheel to wheel. Content between Pastorelli and Geertz. And Geertz through past Pastorelli. Gets up to fourth. Well, Nalio can start smiling because the number six is about to win their first race of the year from pole position. A one-two for the Oregon team and a perfect start to the weekend for the Italian team. They also took second place, even better. Hello, I'm David Simon, team manager from Monlaur Repsol Technical School team. I invite you to follow us during the weekend in our team. Come with me inside the box. The Spanish team Monlo competition comes from a different world to most of the teams entered in the Renault Sport Trophy. Monlo is more used to two-wheel racing, present in Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP. The team has another mission in its home country. Monla Repsol Technical School is more than a racing team. We are teaching young drivers in motorsport, motorbike and cars. We are teaching as well mechanics on how to work in this, or in, in this sport and we are teaching as well engineers. At the Nürburgring, two new drivers will share the Monlo car. In this race we have Eric Remoulet that we know it well from the ages in the Clio Cup and we have Michela Ferruti that uh, is doing a, a great job as well and we are trying to help them to be, to be in great performance for the races of this weekend. Away we go for a crazy lap with the RSO1. 
The bushes is mad. The brakes are totally terrific. You can feel the power of the engine. When it breaks, it slows down really quickly. I have the impression I'm rediscovering this circuit. You can tell the car's stuck to the ground. This zone, well, we're limited to 250 kilometers per hour. of others in the braking zones. I think a lot of drivers would like to be where I am now. The engine is very linear. I've the impression I don't know this circuit when in fact I've been here hundreds if not thousands of times. I really have the impression I'm rediscovering it. The carbon brakes are great and slow down the car really strongly. There's a super feeling with the brake pedal. for the first race of the weekend as well as the best moments from the race we'll get inside going behind the scenes with Truti and Tremilla. Hey, Michaela takes the start of the endurance race from 12th position. The Italian has work to do to get the car into a decent position to hand over to her teammate. The big question everyone's asking themselves will the rain fall on the Nürburgring? The formation lap the number eight is on pole. We're on board with Pizzitola in third place. He's trying to attack Fuminelli. Pizzitola going to the inside. And contact between the two cars. This is the endurance race of 70 minutes. They fight very hard to keep that position. Yeah, He's going for the pit stop. Much better second sector, as they were saying there. And they wanted to attack. Eric Tremolet will take over in 10th place. In 10 seconds to start. To start the engines here. One, go! Tremolet trying to get one of those spots, trying to get rid of Cranbro, goes wide, does manage to get through though. Well done to the Frenchman in front of the Portuguese. It looks like Brahms is going to be okay for the win now. Eric Tremolet up to fourth, a great race from him, climbing from tenth at the handover. Oh, watch out though. He goes Capitano on the last lap attacking. He can't hold it. Drama at the end. That was the last attack, and now it'll be the checkered flag. And the win for Brahms from Capitano. Congratulations to Eric Tremblay from the Monlo team for that fourth place with Michele Ciarutti. Gets and Brahms the winners.
Bonjour, je suis Thibaut de Merindol, team principal du Hard Junior Team. Bienvenue au Mans, je vous invite à suivre le week-end avec nous au sein de notre équipe. Frédéric Vasseur created the Art Grand Prix team from the ashes of ASM at the start of the noughties. The French team has helped top names break through to the highest level, such as Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg, Romain Grosjean, Jules Bianchi. Involved in all the biggest series from GP2 to DTM, Art Grand Prix has an entity dedicated to Formule Renault 2.0 and the Renault Sports Trophy Art Junior Team. On a essayé de faire des équipages les plus performants possibles. We try to make sure we perform as well as possible. The top level experience of Andrea and the experience of Richard in other categories allows us to have well balanced and high performance teams. Indy, who also races in GT, comes from German Formula 3, where he was the best rookie two years ago. Qui a été meilleur rookie de la Formule 3 allemande il y a deux ans. Uh, et Tony and Tony est, is for me the revelation within the team. He's a real gentleman in his 40s and he's one of the quickest of his generation in the field. De plus de 40 ans et qui roule, pour, qui est l'un des plus rapides de sa génération aujourd'hui sur le plateau. Art Junior Team is a high performance team that has a crucial weekend in South. Sebastian Buemi, the world champion in FIA WEC, takes us on board for a lap of the Bugatti circuit. Bonjour à tous. Donc là, on est Hi there, on we're on the pit street at the Bugatti piste, circuit. The first corner Mans, isn't Bugatti, really a corner. The car's very Donc stable là, in the first corner, but at the Dunlop chicane, you really have to slow down for accelerating again, uh, or you go over the curbs. En, en 24h du Mans, voiture très stable dans le premier virage. Mais dans la chicane Dunlop, là, il faut vraiment uh, ralentir, accélérer, prendre les, bi les vibreurs. We had two criteria when we came up with this car, rigidity in order to have exceptional road handling for the constraints we wanted on the car, linked to the speed and aerodynamics. We wanted the car to have top level security and we based ourselves on the LMP1 rules for 2014 with load bearing cables laterally at the front and the back with roll bars. We've also a crash box at the front and a crash box at the back which have come out of the LMP2014. So this is a relatively tight corner with quite a lot of grip. You can feel how aerodynamic the car is, a little bit similar to what you might feel in an LMP1, but the car is a little less powerful. Now we're coming into one of the long corners on the circuit in second gear. It's important to use all the track up until the next exit, and you have to go on the curb. So this is a really quick corner and we're taking it into fifth gear. It's important to have a car that's very directional at low speeds. The traction control is relatively open and you can see you need to use all the track. I also need to get used to the ABS. I'm not used to the system in this car. It's a system we don't have in LMP1. The car moves a lot on the exit and that proves that the car is really very powerful. We're coming up to the final corner now and we need to use the power and the curbs to finish off the lap and pick up as much speed as possible. The endurance race at Le Mans could see the title decided. Fumanelli and Capitano could leave with the trophy if they get good results. Gonda and Pizzitola have the advantage here as they start from pole. Now they're going, it's the green light, off they go. Now Tony Forney, big shunt in front of him, many cars involved. Number six can hit, number eight, little spin. And there's been contact. Forney is going to crash into number 45, Berlin. He'll spin number 14, Boulet as well. He's asking what's happened on the radio. And it's already finished for Tony Forney. Number two, Gonda is a solid leader, just a best lap of the race. Pizzi Taylor is already ready for a driver change. And there he is back in the pit lane.
And Peter Taylor can head off again. Coming to the end of the race now. And PZ Taylor's going for the win. And number two, Gonda PZ Taylor have claimed their victory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After the race, car number one has been controlled with less than three litres of petrol in the tank. The car has been disqualified with the decision number eight, Fuminelli Capitano, leaders of the endurance champions from 2015. The prestige race now. Richard Gonda needs to surf the wave of his success in the endurance race. The title is still a possibility for him. And he must, at any cost, keep Dario Capitano behind him. Gonda needs to make the most of his pole position. The start of the race, number two, Gonda is on pole position. And the red lights go green and they're off. Capitano's okay and he's going up straight away ah but there's contact between the two cars of gonda and capitano number eight now takes the lead and now it's a battle for p1 number two gonda pushes really hard on the leader and he wants to find that victory that he needs so desperately. Even when I have a long race, he just pull away on the straight. The same like on the south, you saw it. Gonda saying that he can do absolutely nothing on the right line. We're at the final moments of this prestige course on the course Bugatti. And Capitano is really, really full speed ahead, going for the win. And with that victory, he becomes the first Renault Sports Trophy Elite Champion for Oregon team. The last race of the weekend, and Andrea Pizzitola goes off from seventh position on the grid. The young Frenchman has his closest title rival in front of him. Championship leader Stein Schotthorst goes off second and David Fuminelli is on pole. The elite race promises to be electric. And Schotthorst in third position, number 10, starts to... seems to be suffering from technical issues with his engine. Lots of problems as he... He possibly has to retire. Water temperature on the engines drops quite dangerously there. And yes, he has to retire. Absolutely. Fuminelli is going for the win in the least race here in Mons. And he's only gone and done it. Two pointers also from the other car. Two pointers also from the other car. Hello, I'm Franz Fischur, team owner's Equipe Fischur, the equipe that's tried to get the championships this weekend. So, if you follow us, you can see if we can make it or not. On the eve of the final two races of the season at Jerez, the battle for the title in the elite category has reached fever pitch. Stein shot also the Vershaw team leads the way by eight points from the driver of the Art Junior team, Andrea Pizzatola. Which of the two will be the first champion in the Renault Sport Trophy Elite? We met Andrea Pizzatola and Stein Schotthorst. A little bit more nerves than normal, but I think uh, that only helps me to focus and, uh, and uh, makes me perform the best I can. You feel more attention, uh, you know that you have to, to, to win and uh, you think, think, think about it. But when you arrive on the race meeting, to be honest, it looked really like the, the other meeting, like 
you have to do your job. Uh, you have to do good, uh, good quality, good race. So it's for now, it's okay. I'm going to win a championship. I hope. I want. I want. We never know, but I want to win the championship. For the endurance race, the weather was changeable a few minutes from the start. The elite drivers take the start and score points in their championship, which makes this all important for Schottorst and Pizzitola in their title quest. At Vershaw, they're wondering which tyres to put on for the first stint of about 35 minutes. On the starting grid, the rain starts to fall and the decisions have been made. Stein Schottorst opts for wet tyres and so does his rival Andrea Pizzitola. Off the start, Andrea Pizzitola surges from fifth to soon find himself shadowing Schottorst after overtaking Pastorelli and Panciatici. Until now, Fuminelli has managed to hold on to the lead, but that doesn't hold for long. At the end of the first lap, the Frenchman from the Art Junior team throws himself into the fray, overtaking Schottorst and Fuminelli under braking on the straight to take the race lead. Stein Schotthorst imitates him and overtakes Fuminelli. Pizzatola Schotthorst, the battle has been joined in the leading drivers and now competing on a drying track. The wet weather tyres are degrading rapidly, but it doesn't stop the leader from pulling out a big lead over Schotthorst. The window for driver changes is now open. Pizzatola comes into the stands. He gets the 25 points for the win and leaves the wheel to Richard Gonda. Stein Schotthorst comes in, but there's no driver change. The number 10 comes straight into the stands. Is the car okay for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, there's no problems with the car at all. We just decided to save the car because uh, the endurance championship, we are not fighting for anything. So uh, there's nothing to gain after the virtual finish like today. And uh, we want to save the car and uh, not take any risk for the race of tomorrow. At this stage of proceedings, 25 minutes plus one lap separates Stein Schottorst or Andrea Pizzitola from the elite title in the Renault Sport Trophy. They don't need to do any serious calculations, only two points between them after taking away their worst result of the season, the advantage is Stein Schottorst's. Once again, on this weekend, the weather makes it difficult to know which strategy to adopt. At the R Junior team, they put on the wet weather tyres. At first sure, they're still not sure. In the end, the mechanics get moving and they put on the slicks. But the Dutch team will soon regret their choice. From the formation lap, the rain starts to fall hard and it means that the track is impossible when you're on slicks. There's the start. Schottos loses a couple of places. But the real drama is the coming together between Pastorelli and Pizzitola. The Italian hits the Frenchman and seems to have ruined his chances for the title. But Pizzatolin manages to get going again and the safety car means he manages to stay in contact with the peloton. Several drivers come into the stands to change their tyres, but at sure the strategy is different. Schottel stays out. He changes his wet weather tyres only on the following lap. After respecting the mandatory tyre change time, the Dutchman gets back onto the track last. 14 minutes plus one lap to go when this restart starts. Pizzatola is in front of Schotthorst in the standings provisionally. The Frenchman accelerating on the straight, but he overtakes Miguel Ramos before getting across the line. Despite the risks of the penalty, he doesn't cut his efforts here and gets up to second place. Stein Schottos isn't giving up on anything up until the chequered flag. He throws all his strength into the battle and overtakes cars to come up to fifth. As he crosses the line, a penalty of 25 seconds lands on Andrea Pizzitola's head. That's the sanction for overtaking before the line when the race was restarted. It means he's third, two seconds in front of Stein Schotthorst. Thanks to this podium finish, the Frenchman, who's come in from single-seaters, gets the title in the elites in the Renault Sport Trophy 2015. A 
never before seen podium for the final meeting. Indy Donchier on the highest step on the podium, followed by Christian Klein and Andrea Pizzitola. In the championship, Pizzitola in front of Schotthorst. Only two points separate them. David Fuminelli is third. In launching the Renault Sport Trophy this season, Renault were throwing their weight behind a high-performance car, one that performed no matter the driver. After competing at top circuits continent-wide, for Jean-Pascal Dos, competition director for Renault Sport Technology, this new formula has been a real success. The assessment is positive and we're very happy with the first year. The setup has been very effective and the championship's gone well. This car was developed thinking about gentlemen drivers and professionals and I think we succeeded in our mission with a car that's agreeable to drive no matter how at ease you are behind the wheel. The strong point of our car is that it's easy to get to grips with. We had drivers who came in and found out what the car is all about and that's important in a launch year. We had drivers who did the entire season with the objective of winning or finishing high in the standings. The panorama was wide for the year. The Nismo president, Mr. Miatani, came here to make the symbolic presentation of Nissan coloured overalls for the test, which will take place in Japan in GT500, that's Super GT with a Nissan factory. And of course we hope that there's no guarantee here that the team gets on well with the champion and they might be able to work closely together in the future. We'll help the champion by offering him time in the simulator so that the driver goes to Japan for the test in the best possible conditions. The car is clearly our strong point and we need to make that known to all the drivers who might want to compete in our championship or in others. I hope that soon we'll have four driver teams working together to compete in 24-hour events and the more people try this car the more we'll sell and the more we'll see in championships because I have absolutely no doubts when it comes to the performance levels of the RS01.